All right, guys, we're back with more of my explanations, but if you're training dogs and you don't have a trigger point that exists away from the handler, you're failing. You are failing. It's not going to work. And if you said, how do you know that? Because it works with one. It works with one. That's how I know. It's not going to work without one. So that's what you've got to say to yourself. I've got to have some physical point that exists away from the handler or I just not gonna I don't know what else to say it isn't gonna work you know and especially for dogs like this hi Mandy this is the thing with Parker it's hard to install a trigger point on Parker at a distance he's doing great though um, but again if, if everything is just going away from the handler if the only physicality is the handler, that's where people go wrong. So we get these prong collars and everything. Okay, you got a lot of physicality. It's related to the handler, and there isn't any physicality from the handler that exists at a point away from the handler. Mandy's like, what? <laughs> Mike knows what I'm talking about. There's got to be a physical point that occurs. If, if you've got to have a way to add physicality when the dog is away from you. I, I don't know what else to say. Anyway, uh, Thor's over here, and he got another squirrel. I would have thought maybe it just died in natural causes, except for it had a, right around its middle, a big slimy spot. Anyway, I'm breaking him over here just by standing here. So I don't talk to this dog that much. And you need to build that. Any dog that is your personal dog that you have, and this goes for Parker too, Mandy, we can't be talking to him all the time. Oh, he gives me sideward looks all the time. You, you can't be just speaking the King's English to him all the time. Uh, Hi, Heather. Uh, yeah, this is my Sunday morning show, Heather. Heather's like, you have a show every day. Uh, I know. <laughs> At least I know what day it is today, though. <laughs> uh, I'm turning into a schlump again that never leaves my house and wears sweats every day. God help me. Help me, you guys. Don't let this happen to me. I promise that this wouldn't happen to me. But that's what I'm saying. I've got a physical point that I can make myself occur away from this dog. Because I'm not going to say to myself, he's saying, what does she want? He's saying to himself, where's the damn squirrels? Where's the squirrels? Where's the slow one? Where's one I can grab? Yeah, that's what he does. So I can call him in, and I think that's what we have to strip it down. Like, how much can I can control with movement? I already know I can control him with movement just by going to that platform. I can augment that by doing my pager and going to the platform, but not using the King's English. safe at any speed. So he knows I talk a lot. He knows I talk to that thing a lot. You know, and so when he's saying, when he's hearing me talking, I'm, I'm, he gave me the shake off. I'm differentiating. Hi, Linnea. Oh, time for the morning show, Linnea. Paul's probably like, get this woman off our computer. Um, so I'm saying to myself, it, it, as, as much as possible, I'm going to you know, that, that that pager is a language between me and him, and it is going to be, it's going to vary from dog to dog, but if you said you can't, you can't speak to that dog with that pager, I understand now. It's, it's more than just a more innocuous constant. It's, you can make it into a language. <laughs> if you said, what did you feel? I'll tell you what I felt. A nose went right like that across my face. All right, look, so. Oh, he raring to go.
Remember, I was working him on getting faster going to the platform. And if you say, how do they get slower? When you get lazy and you start sending them over there and not kind of fortifying it by going over there. Oh, you love the morning show? Great. Get your coffee. Get your coffee and we'll have the bouncing Doberman entertaining you this morning. <laughs> There's like, great. I'll be right back. Let me get my coffee. But that's what I'm thinking. I, I don't have to say any words to this dog. And I think that that's probably better. You know, it's, it's to the point people have talked the dog to the dog so much. There is nothing left to say. Nothing heartfelt anyway. <laughs> what are these song lyrics? <laughs> yeah, they actually are. Uh, you know, but you, you just, he's saying to himself, whatever it's doing, it's entertaining itself right now or they're talking to its box. I'll go look for some squirrels. <laughs> You know, what else is he thinking? So I can get him over there on that platform watch. I got him over there with just the pager. And I'm on zero. I'm doing all this. Let's see it. Wait, here we go. See it. Anyway, you can see it. I'm on zero. So I can just, uh, I can work him around without saying anything. He's reading my body language, though. Speaking with everything. This hand. That was pretty good. I didn't send him. He went on his own. And he should be looking for this hand for the send. I sped my send away up though. And I think what you've got to say to yourself, you've got to have, if you're sending it and it's looking back. Your job is to go to the point it looked back at and send it from there, send it from there, send it from there. Not correct it for looking back. If this thing looks back, you've got to say to yourself, I've added too much distance to my travel. I'll go back to the point. Oh, look at him. He's going back in the back. I'll go back to wherever it's looking back because it's law. It doesn't have the reason it's looking back is it doesn't have confidence. So if it's looking back, it doesn't have confidence. So your job is build the confidence rate in the dog by going to before the point where it's looking back, and some dogs do better moving the handler away. It's, there's a couple different ways to do it, but let me get him back. Yeah. If he comes back with a dead squirrel, it's, it's gonna be too awful. I saw them this morning. They were trying to get a bunch of those little uh, berries and take them wherever it is they take them at once and so it was real heavy and so it was falling off the branch I'm, oh god no you greedy little squirrel just take one at a time all right look I, so i just i'm gonna do the pager and he's gonna appear Awful. No, now he got a rabbit. That's his little body over there. Oh, you bastard. Look at him licking his lips. No. That's what happened. I think he might have gotten it earlier. I think he might have gotten it this morning because when I let him out. Oh, yeah, look at him licking his lips. I don't even want you guys to have to see that. I think it's a rabbit. Hang on, let me look. Sit. Oh, you are awful! No, it's a giant squirrel. You are awful! I'm sorry that you guys have, thank God he didn't run into, but that's what happens. Uh, when something happens like that, ice cream. I'm sorry, you need to prepare yourself. So I can still, I can just, oh, I can use that as a distraction. Oh, he's awful. Absolutely awful. Your job right there, if you're trying to, again, that's what I'm talking about. My job is not to say, okay, he's sent away. My job is to keep fortifying the fact that I'm going to appear at the platform. Sit. <laughs> and 
and that's how you're getting that spin around too. That's why he's spinning around. Uh, wait, hang on. Let me go get the thing and get dispose of this body. It's it's awful. It's absolutely awful. Let me get him on the platform. Oh, he go back there and get it in a minute. Oh, he's looking at it. Hang on, let me grab a dumbbell. Yeah, but he's... Because he's platform trained... I hope you saw that, Mike. That was half of a squirrel. Must have gotten it earlier, though. Let me just tell you what, this morning, at 3 in the morning when I let him out, he was a little slow to return. I had my suspicions. I wasn't about to go out scouting out in that little wooded area right there in the dark to see what it was he was getting. He's all, and I think this is the way you need to be with your dogs, too. It's just all, now at this point, silent. I don't, the only thing I don't like is he's, he gets very stiff. It's hard to move, it's hard to micro-move him when he gets stiff. And I think that's the subtask of the... If you said, what's the subtask of the send away, it is that right there. Because I think if you, if you're doing it right, they are going to be spinning around. <laughs> I think you're asking for that spin. I'm fish hooking that pager around is what I'm doing. I'm basically throwing the same turn with the pager up there. If he comes back with the other half of this thing, oh, he's looking for it now. Oh, he's absolutely awful. You know, he's just, the problem is, that's how he drinks. The problem is, uh, you know, if he was a city dog, and I guess there are squirrels in the city, but, uh, you know, he might do that to cats. All right, I can get him back up there. I can get him up there with just the pager. That's the crazy part. All right, hang on. Let me just grab a dumbbell real quick. Uh, and he'll probably, if, you know, when I send him for the dumbbell, let's hope he doesn't run off to the side and get the dead squirrel. Hi, Brian. Uh, I, I hope you didn't turn in for the part where he returned with half a squirrel. That, you know, if he was a hunting dog, if, I'm, at parts of Arkansas, this dog could be sold for a squirrel dog for a lot of money. <laughs> There's people that want that. But yes, you guys that are trainers, my advice is abandon place work for the platform work as fast as possible. I did. I don't like place work anyway. And I, I you know, you've got to have some of that. But this is just giving you... Sure, this dog is coming up with things like killing squirrels, but your dog might not do that, so... You know, this dog has got... He's got directional work. I just haven't done it lately. And I need to, I'm just, ugh. 
Mike, I'm getting in the biggest fight with Mark over text and, you know, because this Carissa made him close his Facebook and stuff. And I said, Mark, you know how important your support is on there to me, you know, that it's me against all these stimmers and yet I've got, they've got nothing and I've got you. <laughs> so laden with guilt. All right, look, I can send the dog from there. You saw it was very obvious. <laughs> I don't know why you grab it that way. Oh my God, it's jammed in your mouth. He'll jump the gun on me. Don't, don't get yourself. He'll jump the gun on me. And he'll jimmy jack me. And I'm just going to tell you guys right now, that was very apparent. I can go back and find, in hindsight, in hindsight, I would have probably done it differently because that Jimmy Jackin on the return was has, was present in this dog in the very, very beginning. It was present in the very beginning. And it's still there. And it's still there. But the page is the physical trigger point. And it's, it's existing. Fetty! Oh, he about almost got another squirrel. He couldn't get it because the thing was in his mouth. Uh, I, I still have... I, I would not be able to do this as well if I did not have that trigger point away from the handler. So the dog is operating, and you've got to say that to yourself. My level of skill is going to be commensurate with the distance that I can control this dog. And if you said Mark's got five times more skill than you because he can do a 450-yard remote set, I'd say, oh, God, you're so right. That would be about right. But if I did not have the trigger point, yeah, I would be very, it would be very hard to be consistent. be very hard to have a nonverbal cue as effective as that. Yeah, because this dog has a trained retrieve, and if you said, what is a trained retrieve? That. Look at him jack me. That's a trained retrieve. And you may not get that with the shaped. You could, but you're not going to get it right off the bat like that in the beginning. That's what you've got to think of, though. If, if the trigger point only exists at the handler, you're totally limiting yourself to what you're going to be able to do, and the dog is going to understand that. So that's what you guys need to write down. I've got to have a trigger point that exists away from the handler. Or I'm... I'm If you've done anything, if you've done anything to correct this dog for coming to the handler, I'll tell you where you're going to get in the bind with this, with the retrieving. You know, you're not going to get in this, uh, of all my dogs, if you said which one has the worst return on the deliver, that one, <laughs> by far. All right, you guys, I hope you guys like that. But, you know, that's what you need to think of. All of that was on zero, but I'm using it as the trigger point as a physical cue for the dog. And if you said, how is that helping? It's helping him understand what I want. You know, that's my job, not, you know, and I, he doesn't get corrections. He needs them though, I mean, he's awful. He clearly ate half of that squirrel, unless this is my fear. So I just sent him back up there with it. Uh, that there's another half of it out there somewhere waiting to be found. But he understands 
he understands that the trigger point is driving him to the handler. The handler isn't trying, that's why he's got, he's waiting for the trigger. The trigger is existing over there. It's driving him towards the handler, so that's what you've got to think of, and that's why. And Sally, if you're there, the reason your dogs don't run off like mine do is because mine have a highly developed free agency, and that's what we have to work on with yours. You've got to develop free agency, so they are willing to run and experience joy around you, not just slump around like a bunch of stuffed animals. All right, guys, I'll be right back.